Hi everyone, welcome to another episode of the Five One Speedway Show. Hopefully, you enjoyed the last last episode with uh, American team manager Lance King. He was very open and honest, and it was a fantastic one to do. Uh, tonight, my guest is uh, an Australian legend uh, with Eastbourne. He's also started his spell with uh, Edinburgh for a couple of seasons, so I'm sure it'd be interesting for the Edinburgh fans as well. Uh, he's also a two-time British Masters champion. He's also competed in the World Long Track, but unfortunately, a broken leg put paid to his career. Please welcome. On the show Cameron Woodward. Howdy. Howdy. <laughs> oh dear. How you doing, mate? You good? Yeah, good. Yeah, I've just, just mowed my lawns and cracked a beer and I'm I'm really good for Sunday afternoon. Evening. <laughs> yeah, yeah. Retirement's done you good then. <laughs> yeah, yeah, definitely. Yeah, I saw the other week that you were um stepped into the old referees box. Um yeah. in, in Elspeed West. What was that all about then? Yeah, they've um my sort of un- my uncle, godfather sort of thing, and uh, another um, referee have been pushing me pretty hard since I got home, and uh, I sort of wanted a bit of a, sp- I wanted me space away from it a little bit. You sort of when it when you live and breathe it, um, mm. and it's gone. It, it, you sort of need a bit of a cleanse, which I had, and um, but they've sort of they're mid sixties, nearly seventy, and there's no one else coming through, mm. um, so. Uh, I've got to give back, I suppose, I'll give back to the sport. And um, I'm, I'm just in the background. I've got me a last um, uh, online seminar to get me level three, which will get me like state titles um, and stuff for Aussie. And then uh, Motorcycling Australia rang me last week and they want me to do an FIM uh, course as well for, I think it's more like in the, um, we plug a course sort of thing. Oh, yeah. So, um yeah, I got a message, uh, text message this morning saying it was cancelled to uh, tomorrow. I'm glad it was because I didn't know it was on. <laughs> <laughs> I, I don't know what's going on there. But I just woke up. I was like, oh, cool. I'm not missing something that I didn't know was happening. But um, yeah, so it, it's it's a way of giving back, I suppose. The, the boys are pretty pumped. Or at the moment, they're pretty pumped. I'm going to do this and give back. And um, hopefully I see it the way... A rider sees it. Um, there's always two sides, like everything. Um, but I'm going to give it a go and try and give back and, and see what happens. But um, I think you get your payments one beer, so I'm not going to retire on it. Um, <laughs> but it, it's, it's a way of giving back to a sport that give me so much. So why not? Yeah, hundred percent. Because obviously, you know, we have always said as riders that the best referees are ex-riders, or even best team managers are ex-riders. You know, so you know you can really put that to the test now that you're going to step into that sort of yeah, thing. Yeah, or, or the other, or the, the other, comp- the competitors will put it to the test. Um, I've had a few boys a bit itchy with the clutch, and I pull them. I just made a rule from the start: if anyone gets an advantage, we'll just pull them back and go again. So. A few of the boys have been testing me and they're not going to get away with it. So hopefully they get sick of that and make it a bit easier for me. <laughs> yeah, then, then someone works out your system and then that's it. They're going to trap you every time. <laughs> yeah, and <laughs> I'll just pull like them that. back. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> it's, um, I was never a guesser. I I, uh, I, w- I was probably the opposite. I, I watched it go up to the top and then drop me clutch <laughs> like a, a little bit special. But um, uh, I wish I was a trapper, but I wasn't. But uh, it was it was a pet aid of mine. It was it just delayed meetings, delayed starts, and it's not what the fans want to see. So um, I'll probably be a bit annoying for the boys, but it's uh, tough titties. <laughs> <laughs> well, it doesn't matter because, like I said, no, you, you see, you know, you're going to see it from both sides of the fence, you know, and things like yeah. that. Now, so it's going to be interesting for yourself, interesting for the boys, especially if you put someone like against, I don't know, like Doily or someone like that comes up to the tapes, you know, and you think, oh, Cam's doing that. He's going to be nice to me this week. You know, I'll try and jump it. And then, no, 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 no. Don't care if you're world champion or not, you're coming back. Nah, Doily's <laughs> a good example. I would never give him an inch. He never gave me one. So um, I had Crumpy the other day. He he, um, he obviously had his arm like over the, the white line and he just looked up at me for like approval. He's he looking up at me. I'm like, I can't see. I, I'm like on an angle, like a 45 degree angle. And I just shook my head. I was like, whatever, man. You've yeah. earned it. You've earned it. You can have your elbow over the line. You're going to go, yeah, okay, yeah, I'm ready. Yeah, that's fine. Good on yeah. you. 
No, but uh, yeah, I saw that in the Speedway Star the other week, and I thought, oh, you know, if I talk to Cam, we've got to talk to him about that because that's just interesting to find that out, you know, because obviously, yeah, you know, with all this new, wonder what you're doing really more than anything because obviously, since you stopped riding, you've not really done much. I mean, I think you've spun out a couple of times in the pra- in the couple of practices. I think like a couple of years ago, or something like that. I think I saw on Facebook you went out and had a bit a bit of fun, but that's about it, really. Yeah, I haven't had a skid since I had my hip replacement, so mm. I sort of, I sort of the leg. I got told I got clearance that was healed my femur. Um, so 2016, I think it was. I, I did the summer. Or I started the summer and did two <laughs> meetings, and crashed at a. I think it was an Aussie Aussie team fundraiser at Gilman. <laughs> I crashed and broke the neck of the femur off because um, the femur had a shaft in it still. So it just snapped and annihilated itself and. Then I had a year of that trying to, me femur trying to heal, they bored it out and put a new rod in there and try to make it more stable for it to heal. Because it, it, once I broke my knot, they opened me up and had a look and it was still broken like two years later. So that was pretty ordinary to find out. And um, I, I sprayed the, the um, surgeon I was seeing, pain I was seeing in Brisbane. <laughs> uh, and, but by chance, I, I fell um, for this, I, I um, landed on this hip specialist in Adelaide, just in the Royal Adelaide, just the normal, you know, NHS version, what the Aussies have got. And then seen him privately and, uh, yeah, he fixed me femur. It healed and it's one piece now. And they pulled the shaft out and then they give me a full uh, brand new hip. So I haven't skidded since 2016, but I um, I want to. Uh, <laughs> but, I can imagine. Uh, only only on my own uh with hopefully no one looking <laughs> and a big wide so, track smooth as anything <laughs> you'd yeah. be well away <laughs> i'll go out the salt lakes where there's no fence that's probably yeah. the safest so myself um cory gathercole who's just had a, a shoulder rico mm. um and trav mcgown we're still like the local washed up boys <laughs> and probably lions you too i should probably hit him up i think we'll try and take some bikes out the salt lakes next summer so Corey will have a 12 months in his shoulder and i might get rid of my beer gut and and, <laughs> um, and we'll, we'll go have a, have a bit of a ride yeah well no it's good to hear because obviously all these other boys you know we don't really hear much about it since they stopped sort of riding over here and everything like you say travis yep. Corey, obviously jace jason we know a bit about because you see him pop up with his um his meeting he does every year but um you know yep. it's good it's good to hear that you guys are still keen just to have fun and a bit of bit of, bit of bike time you know you know eventually once you're healed up and strapped up and a bit of duct tape here a bit of duct tape there you know be well away <laughs> Yeah, it's um, we we still ride now. Me, Trav, and Corey. We got a few other mates. We ride Harley's. So oh yeah, uh, <laughs> we Mildura is one of the like it's Norfolk pretty much. It's flat as flat as the shit goes out. Yeah. Um, <laughs> it, it's hot as hell. There's yeah. no cool corners or anything. So there's no point having a Ducati or anything fast because you, you'll lose your license. But um, so we've all got Harley's that don't stop, don't start, don't go fast and we go and have a ride every couple of months and talk shit and uh, it's good we sort of drag ourselves through it it's sort of you know, life after uh, so i don't want to get the violin out but life after having a really good time racing speedway <laughs> is is hard work and it's um uh, and i think or you feel like only the blokes that have been through it with you or themselves really understand you so it's cool that i've got those two guys especially um yeah. to lean on yeah, I mean, normal life sucks really compared to a speedway rider's life. But then again, you know, you, don't, you probably don't miss the travelling, you know, things like that. You know, that's that's, that's the difference going oh, out of airports. I loved it. <laughs> no, I loved it. I the, I hated sleeping in airports and yeah. and being a tight ass and sleeping on van floors and all that. I wish I'd spent a little bit more money on hotels. But um, no, I loved the travelling. I, I loved seeing so much of Europe that. Uh, a normal plumber from Mojura wouldn't have seen. So um, I'm very thankful for all of that, really. Yeah. And is that what you do now then? You're a, bit, you're a plumber now then and things like that for work? No, no. I mean, right. fake hip and uh, I've, got, I've got a dodgy wrist that looks at a shovel and it blows up. So I don't <laughs> dig holes. Um, if you can't dig holes and walk on 25-degree uh, pitch roofs, you're not a plumber over here. No. So, um, I'm... I'm a uh, new homes consultant for GJ Gardner, which is the biggest builder in in our area. All right. Um, we build normally on average sixty houses a year, and we've sold ninety this last year. It's 
um, the government brought out a stimulus package with COVID and it's just mm. gone bonkers. So I'm a salesman, which I never thought I would be. I, um, I, I hate salesmen <laughs> and I'll turn into one, but, uh, it's, uh, it's a little bit different. Um, it's quite an emotional purchase. Mm. Um, they see through the, the bullshit of a normal salesman. So it's, mm. it's more of a consult consultative sort of thing. So it's not too bad then. Yeah, getting there, getting yeah. there. It's still emotional, which is hard work. Um, mm. I'm not really good with that sort of stuff, but uh, it, it, I've had a good year. So mm. as long as all, I get paid when the slabs go down. So fingers crossed, they all they all get permits and get slabs down, and we'll have a good year. Well, there you go, and that's it. I mean, as long as you're healthy and everything else now, mate, that's more than anything. Especially in these these tough times, I keep going about. Yeah, 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 definitely. It's um, yeah, we. So me and uh, my wife Naomi, um, she come over with me from Eastbourne. So mm. uh, we've been battling trying to have kids for the last few years, and and we've done the IVF thing, and it's finally worked. So oh, we're good. Um, fingers crossed, touch wood, everything else. We, <laughs> we should be good for the first week of May. So um, yeah, that that's obviously another part of growing up. <laughs> yeah, too bad. It's, uh, <laughs> it's uh, yeah, this this uh this world after just worrying about myself is is crazy. <laughs> yeah, tell me about it because I've got a little girl now and she's nearly thirteen oh, months, and and that sort of thing. And you think, oh, she keeps you on your toes. She's trying to walk now. You know, that, that's a scary oh, thing. Oh man, it, a one bit of advice. And now everything's to the floor or the wall or the ceiling because <laughs> they'll go for it. They'll try and pick it up and everything. You know, but uh, yeah, no, no mate. Honestly, uh, hopefully everything goes well for you guys and um. Thank you. Everything and uh, yeah, and little Woodward running around soon then. <laughs> yeah, yeah, we don't know what it's going to be, so it'll be kind of surprise. But um, mm. it uh, no, we're very excited. Uh, the missus obviously doing a little bit harder than me, carrying carrying <laughs> little human around. But um, yeah. yeah, she's going good. So nah, that's I'm good. Then. That's good. Then. And also, it's not going to be during your summertime as well, so it's not going to be hopefully too hot either. So you know, it's yeah. a win for you guys. We've been really lucky that the summer we've had has been quite mild uh, for Mordura standards. We've only had. I think probably four or five over 40, mm-hmm. which normally we have 15 odd, which is just useless. <laughs> 40 degrees is just not pleasant for anyone. No. So it, it's been quite good. And, and we had about 40 mil of rain uh, the last week, which is oh, what we get for the whole of winter normally. So it's <laughs> um, it's been good. It's good for my lawn. I'm, I'm yeah. happy. My, my lawn's nice and green. <laughs> Yeah, that's, that's the important thing. As long as your lawn's fine, you know, and everything's good, that's that's the main oh, thing. Live, live in the dream, live <laughs> the dream. Yeah, I can't really say it's a bit like that over here at the moment. It's freezing cold and snow and, you know, rain every day. Yeah. Yeah. Not good. Yeah, Not I good. Got, so obviously got gnomes as family over there and i got people that help me through, you mm. know, the good times and the bad that are like family as well. Um, so, yeah, yeah, it's, it's hard for you guys all locked down and... Yeah, fingers crossed you're out of it soon and this vaccine kicks in. So, mm. Yeah, that's what we're all hoping for. You know, as long as we get back to some sort of normality in a few months and I think everyone will be okay with it all and then go from there, really. But apart from that, um, it's good to hear everything all about what you're doing now, Cam, but we want to talk about how you got started into Speedway because obviously, you know, knowing that Australia's got a big sort of uh, junior sort of program out there and pushing juniors and all that sort of thing around about your time when you started. So was that the sort of um, way that you went through the program? Yep. So, uh, it wasn't, it's program sounds a little bit official. It's, it's a little <laughs> bit looser than that. Okay. Um, fair enough. <laughs> but, but so my uncle had a motorbike wreckers or motorbike shop, like mm. all secondhand stuff. And, uh, when he was bored, he used to like making flat track frames and speedway frames. And he had, had a old Lee Adams upright in the, in the shop and he thought he'd have a crack at a junior bike. So he made one that was super heavy and a little bit twisted and he gave me and another kid a go on it. And we both took bark off from, you know, calf to the back, mm-hmm. our backs, you know, just skin off everywhere. And I put my hand up and wanted to go back next time. And the other kid didn't. So it was, it was my bike, <laughs> which was pretty cool. <laughs> and, um, it, it, it was, um, a bit of a blessing cause my old man just used to work seven days a week. Sort of like he does now again, but we, when racing come on, um, you know, the family used to load up. He converted a, a big denning coach into a mobile home and the junior box used to go underneath and we used to go to Queensland for, a, you know, a, a summer holiday um, with the sisters and that. So it was really cool. It brought us all together. And um, yeah, it was 
pretty successful. Didn't get too many number ones. Got twos and threes and fours <laughs> and that, which suck. But uh, <laughs> the junior thing was cool. Um, taught us a heap. And then we um, – so I, I was sort of – every single Aussie titles was Rory Schlein, uh, Jason Doyle, um, Mark Jones, who did a bit of England. Um, uh, that, that were the main four sort of thing and me. And um, to Jay and oh, Stevens. <laughs> so Doyley's two cousins who who are actually better than Doyley on the junior bike. Um, <laughs> and um, yeah, so we are six odd and Scott James as well. Mm-hmm. So us six, seven sort of every Aussie titles was on for Donkey Kong. Which was <laughs> cool. And then that continued in the other 21s. Yeah. Um, and yeah, Nick, I, I got a Guernsey to come to England and do the under 21s and, mm. I held out. I held out a year. I think I the deal sort of was with mum and dad was um, finish school and you can do what you want. Mm. Um, so I finished year twelve, which was like our VCE to get into uni. Yeah. Um, and then I was eighteen over and done down twenty one at pool and crashed my brains out and <laughs> done a heap of second halves, which was awesome. And lived yeah. with live between Lee um, Adams Adam Allett in mm-hmm. Buxton. Yeah. And then uh, Trav McGowan, I mechanic for as well, um, mm. towards the end of the season when he was with Oxford with Greg. So, um, seen a heap. Um, did a whole lot of growing up. <laughs> I I, uh, I didn't know how to use the, the washing machine, the dishwasher. <laughs> Everything that got cooked for me was had tomato sauce on it. it oh was, yes, <laughs> it was huge. It was a, a huge year. Uh, mm. It was six months, but it was oh, it was the best six months ever. It was so cool. Um, yeah. And yeah, it, just to do it in England where it was a little bit, um, it was a totally different way of life compared mm. to Mordura. Mordura is mm. pretty country life. Everyone's pretty sheltered and um, yeah, to England where it's just a whole lot more people crammed into a little <laughs> space um, and they all know, knew how to have a lot of fun on the weekend. Mm. So it was cool. Very cool. Yeah, that's good to hear because um, I've looked at your, I've got your individual stats from those sort of early days and you say you came runner-up in the Aussie on 21 final in 2003 and then you came third in 05. So, you know, it's not, not a bad little run you had in the Aussie chart, in the um, Aussie on 21s at that sort of time though. Yeah. No, it was it was fine, but, you know, nothing really counts unless you win. <laughs> no, number one plates for everything, isn't it? It's number one. Yeah, 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 yeah. <laughs> I so, think first year I went, I think it was four, third, then second... Then I think I was third, and then I broke my collarbone or something. The final one, so mm. it was, it was okay. Chris Older beat me. He turned out to be world champion. Yeah, who's he then? Rory <laughs> beat me. <laughs> <laughs> Who are these boys? Never heard of these uh, yeah. boys. <laughs> yeah, so I didn't get beat by wobblers, which was cool. But um, yeah. it's uh, it was it was a pretty cool generation mm. um, that we dragged each other up, which was really cool. Mm. Um, Rory was sort of like the first. He went at 15, which like no Aussie had ever really done. Yeah. Um, so I'm six months younger than him, I think. And then Doyle is six months younger than me. So it was mm. to see him do that and just we panicked because it just we thought <laughs> he was just going to race away from us. So so we burned a lot of methanol and yeah. a lot of petrol going to race meetings in the winter and stuff. So. Yeah, because well, I mean, um, I know that Rory went for, um, I think it was Na- uh, Conference League at the time, he went for Sheffield. Um, at that sort of time, yep. you know, for for a year and things like that, but and you know, it must have given you yourself, Doyle, Scott James, whoever else is coming through, thinking, "Shit, we can do this." You know, if Rory can go over and do it and succeed, then so can we. Ah, uh, I was just jealous. I was just <laughs> thought I was missing out. <laughs> I was just like, ah. <laughs> He's uh, no, it was, it was cool. Um, mm. you grab the, the Speedway Star every week. Would come three weeks late. Um, <laughs> over here, and um. You'd check it and go, oh, yeah, cool. The internet wasn't, I don't know, maybe I just wasn't that on to the internet, but it was, uh, it was probably MySpace or something back there. Yeah, probably, yeah. It's not quite the same platform as Facebook. So no. it was the Speedway Star was about it. Mm. Um, we, I reckon year 11 and year 12, we, we had we had Sky Sports Elite League. All oh, um, right, yeah. And it, was, it was played Wednesday morning and somehow – my year 11 and 12, I didn't start school till 12. It was so cool. Um, <laughs> and that, that was, um, that was sort of what, yeah, that was, yeah, that was really it, cool. Yeah. Cause we hadn't had really spare on TV ever. It was just, 
whoever turned up is what we knew mm-hmm. and what speed we seen. So mm-hmm. when you seen like Shikelski and all those boys, like he was he was the man in England mm-hmm. just carving up first year there. So um yeah. No, it's good. It's good to hear because obviously again we don't know what you used to get over there back in the day and things like that before the internet took off, Facebook and everything else we have yeah. now. But um yeah, it's good to hear that because obviously then like you said in uh, two thousand and three you actually according to the things I found you managed to actually technically have five meetings with Paul. Um, yep. doing the things like the British League Cup or whatever it was and things like that That's during right. that time. But uh, that must have been good to have that sort of experience riding against sort of like Premier League slash Elite League boys at that time. Yeah, it was. Uh, we I was hoping for more, um, but some bloke called Antonio Limbach, I had to share a spot with him. <laughs> yeah, what, did like, he, what did he do? What did he do? He was <laughs> fast, man. I, I ended up, when he first came, I, so I did a few means, I did Workington and a few others and, uh, that was really cool, just mechanic and for myself. I think I'm a sister mechanic for me at Exeter. <laughs> um, it was it was in the deep end for sure. But mm. um, I remember uh, Antonio come over and Lee lent him his bikes and I went mechanic for him. And, uh, yeah, he was just ridiculous fast. <laughs> it was so cool. And and then he didn't have a clue who I was. I mechanic for him. We I think he might have dropped two for out of – you know, out of 18 or something from reserve. And then I, I never really, I, I reckon somehow I ended up lining, lining up at a meeting with him and smoked him. And, and then he goes, Hey, I remember you. I was like, yeah, yeah I'm the tools. <laughs> yeah. yeah. Spanner man. <laughs> <what Spanner-Man>. <laughs> <laughs> so yeah, it was a, it was a big eye opening year. Mm. Um, and nothing really was looking any good for the following year until I, Kev Doolan, um, I was up in Bucks and he dragged me up to Berwick. Mm. Um, and I had a, I think I had a, I had a second half. I, no, I did a, it was Mid- Middlesbrough. Mm. Middlesbrough when they were just like a second half team. Yeah. I did a meeting at Buxton and then, which was a second half of a conference league, which was, <laughs> Yeah, Most that's, of the that's, fourth, that's fourth <laughs> leg then, isn't it? <laughs> yeah. yeah. And then we went to and had a second half at, for Middlesbrough at Edinburgh. Yeah. And I raced, I'm pretty sure I raced Andrew Tully um, and Gary Flint was in my team. Mm. And and that was cool. And then I, I did a ride at Edinburgh and that was sort of what got, got me the Guernsey the following year. Yeah, that's good thing. So obviously, again, foot in the door. You know, you managed to get yourself over here and then away you went, riding for Edinburgh for two seasons. I mean, it must have been heaps of fun. Obviously, the first year was, a, again, a huge learning curve, going to these different yeah. places, living and breathing Speedway in Scotland and every, everywhere else. So, I mean, what was your sort of memories of those sort of early years of riding for Edinburgh then? I had a, a really nice bloke I lived with um, in, in Edinburgh, so I based myself there. Mm. Um, he'd never had anyone live with him. Uh, he didn't have a workshop <laughs> or anything. And um, slowly but surely, I just threw more shit out of his shed and ended up <laughs> taking over his shed. But um, he, he was great value. Um, a little bit of regret. He used to play golf twice a week, and now mm. I love golf. And I, I didn't play golf. I, I took things too serious and rode my push bike as much as I could. But... Um, First year was uh, we had Freddie Shot and Rory um, and Tio and it was it was sort of a the, the team didn't really gel. Um, everyone just did their own thing. Freddie was ready to retire, um, and oh Peter Carr, Peter Carr Peter was probably yeah. the best. He was cool for that season. Actually, he helped me out a lot. But the second year we had all um, pretty mediocre riders. So Rusty Harrison. <laughs> Yeah, you know, we're just all middle. You know, we're mm-hmm. all six or seven point average, and and yeah. we were going awesome. We had a really good year. So it was Rusty, Rory. No, did we have Rory? Can't even remember now. Um, oh, De- Daniel Nearmark. He oh. was loose. <laughs> he was loose. But um, Ross Brady. Yeah. We didn't have Rory, so we mm-hmm. had a a really just seven point. Out. Everyone ended up like seven or eight point average at the end of the year. Mm-hmm. It was and Willie Lawson. Yeah, uh, I I really enjoyed that year. That was really cool. Um, mm. It was way more family feeling to what we ended up having at Edinburgh, which was cool. There was yeah, no I... outright number one that you know wanted to rule a roost or anything like that. 
well, that's a good thing because obviously then everyone, like you said, gels together, gets on well together. Of course, when you go on the on the southern tours, as it would be, you know, it'd be a lot of fun, like to the Isle of Wight and Exeter and and places like that, scary tracks, you know, <laughs> things like that. But um, you know, I mean, must what sort of was your like favourite track then in the Premier League, apart from probably Edinburgh at that time? Did you have a, like a favourite away track? Oh, Sh- Sheffield, Sheffield. Oh, Sheffield, sick. yeah, yeah. Mm. So I did a few second halves when I was so when I was second half and it was I was up against. Um, uh, Richard Hall, uh, um, Ben, 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 Ben Wilson, maybe oh, was it? Wilson. Yep, Ben Wilson. Yeah. So he 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 was a second string, but he'd have a double in the second half if he didn't mm. have something working. So um, that was really cool hanging out there, and and they were all little superstars there. It was <laughs> like it was a really big crowd, and yeah. there was young girls and all this shit that I wasn't used to. So <laughs> going there and watching all those little superstars and um, beating them in the second yeah. half was cool. So um, I enjoyed it more beating them in the Premier League. So, Yeah, yeah. I can imagine. So, of course, Sheffield's a fun, fast track to ride anyway. So yeah. it's, uh, yeah. yeah, let it all hang out. A bit like back at home in Aussie then, really. Yeah, we haven't got one that big and round. It, it's mm-hmm. quite an intimidating place because um, there's just a kickboard and then it's just a wire fence um, that you got to aim for down the straight. So um, that that is a really cool place. I, I loved it there. I, I didn't ride. I didn't get to race there enough. I only did no. probably two or three meetings in the Premier League, and I did one open meeting there. Um, to call that place home would have been pretty cool. <laughs> yeah, we wouldn't have helped you gating though. You know, you wouldn't have improved. No, gating, no, I just wouldn't have had to worry about it. Would I just like, watch them go and then let's go? <laughs> yeah, give them a handicap and away you went. Yeah. <laughs> no, I should have ridden somewhere like Lakeside or, or somewhere to try and learn a trap. But... Yeah. Mind you, though, in, in terms of them five, also, you did two meetings for Eastbourne, which obviously then you eventually stayed with and finished your whole career with them. But um, yep. was that was that good then? Was that an eye opener then to come and have a couple of meetings with Eastbourne in 05 then? Yeah, that was, um, I think it was Cookie giving me a call. And mm. we, my uncle was over, just, he just bought a car and was cruising around doing the side, like watching the sidecar thing. He was into the grass track sidecars and stuff. And, um, uh, he'd come and see me in Edinburgh and he got there like on the Thursday and I got this phone, uh, it must have been, sorry, a Sunday or something and Monday I got a phone call to drive down to Pool to, for the Wednesday and then Thursday was Ipswich so we just loaded up, drove down there I think we stayed at Middlelows I reckon, yep, we stayed at Middlelows that night I didn't go very good at Pool mm. um, but I had a good one at Ipswich I think from memory um, and then drove home and I think I think I broke my wrist like not many weeks after that yeah. um, in the Scottish Open. Mm-hmm. I think I was, I was trying to round up Shane Parker and um, yeah. It didn't work. Make it. <laughs> it didn't work. No, no. That's the wrist that's giving me grief now. Oh, right. <laughs> nice one, Shane. Nice one. <laughs> <laughs> no, it would have been my fault. Yeah, no, yeah. No, but then after that, obviously, after those two spells at Edinburgh, and then you went on to, let's say, 2006 and start your illustrious career with Eastbourne you know yep. um, I remember as a, as a, I was 16 at that time I remember seeing thinking, who's Cameron Woodward you know who's this Aussie yeah. sort of thing you know nobody really heard, I mean obviously you've seen your, your scores in the Premier League with Edinburgh but you weren't like you say an out and out number one at that club and then you came to Eastbourne and everyone was like who's Cam who is it who is yeah. this guy but then obviously once you settled in everyone loved you you know, because obviously then you're you're good at reserve for I think it was a couple of seasons you were at reserve and, and things like that and mixing it and also having some good boys around you at that time yeah, it was um, it was a lifeline that Eastbourne gave me actually, because mm. so I went home with a broken wrist. Um, I think I so I had to. I remember um, I've forgotten the promoter's name, Edinburgh, but I had to get top four in a state title to get me visa mm. for them to take me on again. I went and won the Vic titles um, against Trav and Kevin, that which was pretty cool for me at the time. Um, and then two weeks later, got and that was after you know the wrist. I think it was two weeks after my wrist got the clearance, won that, and then they told me I wasn't in. So, and it, they they dummy quite late, so I was pretty pretty annoyed because it, it it didn't give me a chance to find anyone. And, and you know, two years just you know middle of the pile in the Premier League, mm-hmm. it's hard to get asked for a phone call really. Yeah. Um. So I didn't. I reckon it was May. Was it May I started? I think it was around that sort of time. Cause you didn't, and I remember you didn't start the season at Eastbourne. No, I think someone, no, I think so someone got injured and then you came in. I was home 
Mm-hmm. Um, I was home working and riding pit bikes and then got the phone call. First of all, I got a phone call from Oxford at the time to go with Todd. So they started with Ricards and and someone. You um, had Davey there as well at that time. And Davey yep. Watt was there at the time and things like that. People yep. like that, yeah. So they were, they were, I think Ricards had done a deal to until the Grand Prix started. Mm-hmm. So Todd was going to slip in there with me and this other rider and uh, Ricards and we're out. And it, I don't know what happened if it was an average thing or what, but I got shoehorned again. <laughs> and then, like a, a week a week later, after crying myself to sleep, um, Cookie rang me and, and said, "Come on over." So that was cool. I had to drive. Mum and I uh, loaded up all my belongings and drove from here to Canberra, which is nine hours away. Local. Got to the <laughs> got to the passport office and mm-hmm. when they opened and they. Stamp my V. Oh, they wouldn't do it on the per- spot, spot. So I give it to them. We got a coffee. Come back. Grab. We had the they had the visa. We're good. So then we drove to Melbourne, which was five hours back ish to where towards where we'd come. Yeah. Um. Jumped on the aeroplane and CMR. Thank you. And and flew in England and um. Yeah. So the Giffards. Uh. Mm. Sort of. I, I knew Dan, Dan sort of lived with me for a little while here when he was hanging out with Rory and he sort of returned the favour, which was awesome because I didn't have a clue. So uh, him and Clive and his brother John and um, Clive's girlfriend Sue sort of got me through those first hard years and um, I'm very thankful to them because I wouldn't have survived without them. Oh, exactly. Because obviously, again, Dan and that lot, they all live local, all Eastbourne anyway. Yep. So it's like, you know, like a half an hour, 40 minute drive from there to, to Eastbourne, you know, um, yep. and things like that. So obviously, you know, nice to have that sort of thing. And also having um, Bob Dugar, John Cook, people like that around at the time, you know, just to give you that support. And obviously having probably, it was in the team then, probably like, like Floppy was there, Dino was there. Um, so you yep. had great guys, like I said, around you just sort of like push you in the right direction. Yeah. Yeah, definitely. It's sort of, um, even Martin used to help out a bit at the track, mm. uh, which was cool. Um, it was, it wasn't the the Australian um, flow into England. Um, mm. Nearly all of them go to Poole or Swindon, and they all hang around that sort of area. So I was out of that sort of thing, um, which was didn't matter because I had LBR and Dan and mm. Gearnob and um, Floppy. And, uh, yes, we used to go mountain biking a bit. and um, But it, I was a bit of a recluse as well. I didn't mind hanging around myself. So, um, But it, it was cool just having those guys and, and um, you know, if things weren't going good or they were, we were there for each other a bit. So um, myself and Lewis were, were pretty close. Um, I didn't I didn't play up as much as him, but we used to hang out a hell of a lot. And if we were bored, oh, we did, we did Sweden. We had a few meetings together out in Sweden mm. and um, got into trouble a little bit together. So no, nah, he, he was good. He, he he got me through. He was a lot younger than me, and mm. and I tried to guide him a bit. But um, he's a free spirit, that man. Yeah, yeah, and it'd be interesting to see what he does this year when he comes back, you know. Yeah, you know, yeah. And he's like third or fourth retirement, I think it is. I don't know which one it is now. I've lost count. It, it'll, it'll be like he's never been off it, that's for sure. We know yeah. that much. Yeah, it will be, it will be. But um, yeah, I mean, obviously then obviously, then the road to uh, Eastbourne and it all started and say, I've got the stats here and things like that. So whether it's 100% official, I don't know. But your average was a fir- for first year was a 3.42. So obviously then, like I said, learning the ropes that year. Yeah. Obviously, get right against the best in the world at that time as well and things like that you know again it was quite huge... strong that that year the, mm. the elite league so we had nikki and um that it the the, the league did i can see now a little bit from there probably yeah. um but yeah no it was it was a big first year and, and coming in when everyone was already going um was was hard mm. um i was on jawas everyone else was on gms um but no it was it, I'm forever thankful because it, it could have been those two years in Edinburgh could have been it. Yeah, exactly. Um, so, um, and that, that first year I met Ash Wooler, mm-hmm. who was pretty pivotal on keeping me sane and in the country as well. <laughs> yeah. Um, Cause there was a fair few times that I was pretty keen to just jump on a flight and go home and dig holes, but mm. um, he dragged me through it, which was awesome. Mm. We had some amazing times together. 
yeah, because Ash was like your, your uh, number one mechanic for a little while as well, yep. and things like that. And then obviously, then later on, you had Gear Knob come on board to help you and things like that. And then obviously, yep. Ash, like... Ash was still there. So mm. yeah, he was still flying because I think he ended up being your driver then after a while, wouldn't it, or something like that? <laughs> yeah, he'd go, he'd grab on, the, jump on the tools in the long track Grand Prix and that. Mm. Towards the end, when I had Gear Knob, he was Ash was pivotal because um, you can't do it just with two, you know, me and one bloke. So yeah. Um, yeah, and he, he did a lot of stuff in the background. So him and um, Kevin Hollister, who mm. used to um, build sidecar frames in his farm, so they used to straighten my bikes because, I used, as you know, I used to bend a fair few. So um, he was always straightening me bikes, and um, he was very pivotal on keeping <laughs> keeping my bike, keeping two bikes to each race mean. Yeah, keep them straight more than anything. It doesn't matter how they yep. got there, it's all going to go straight. Yeah, yep. <laughs> like, straight. Yeah, but also, I mean, obviously in that time, and um, again, 2007, you signed again for Eastbourne, and uh, again, your average went up to a 5.34. So then you, you can see the steady progress already in year two. I think that was when, um, was it Bob Brimston was in was in charge that year? I yeah, was... that, that, that was a cool year. That was, uh, he, he was encouraging Pilates, which I didn't even know what it was at the start of the year, and <laughs> Floppy was doing it, so I had to give it a go. Yeah. <laughs> No, was, me. It, it, he was a cool guy though um mm. bobby he was um he went in deep straight away which you know i think it seems to happen a lot with with guys that want to just have a, a dabble but mm. um he was he was a lovely bloke um really approachable um i don't know how he went year wise um i don't, I don't, I don't think, I think it was more the hagen years that we were good mm. again but yeah because i wait was the year that martin hagen took over and that's when you had scotty Lee Richardson, yep. um, obviously Lewis, Simon was just playing his way back into the that team. You know, yeah, I think yeah, it was a good year. It was a year that we should have made the playoffs and should have won the yep. league because everyone tipped us yep. to win the league. But unfortunately, it just didn't work out. But that year, you won the cup. So, you know, it was yeah, first, we did. first bit of silverware for yourself as, in a, as a yeah. team sort of thing. So Yeah, took it off Paul too, which is even better. Um, <laughs> Who were they? Who were Paul? Never heard of them. You know? <laughs> <laughs> Used to like beating them. That was yeah. good. Yeah, with a couple of kids called Darcy Ward and Chris Holder, I think it were. Around. Yeah, they were pretty fast as well. Yeah, yeah, yeah don't, don't know who they are. Um, you know, <laughs> but uh, yeah, I mean, obviously that year was obviously a, again a pivotal year for yourself because that time you were riding in Sweden, I think it was, and uh, just started in Poland. You know, um, yep. so starting to live the sort of like the pro life of being in and out of airports and traveling here, there, and everywhere. Yeah, yeah, Poland was um, huge learning curve. So I think Davey got me into Poland at Zhezhov. Mm. Ah, was it was his first year with me it was with Bribson I think so that's probably yeah. my first year I went there and I think first meeting I, I got paid 12 on this track that was like this deep <laughs> and my engine they give me was dog shit but yeah. it, I just held it on the curb and leaned it over and it was fine but um, that I think Scott was there with me then and then my, I reckon it was my third year at, at um, second or third year at Zhezhov, I, uh we had a run at the to make the uh, extra league, mm. and um, I I um, misplaced my passport getting onto the aeroplane, and they threw it off at, at Gatwick mm. um, before we took off. I helped the lady chuck her bag up. I sat me ticket and. And passport down on my seat, and the guy that followed me in happened to be the guy behind me. Mm. Give it to the air hostess, and she's throwing it off at Gatwick because she thought it was the other, other, whatever. So, got to Latvia, no passport, um, locked me up in a room of my own, and uh, I missed that playoff final against mm. Dougal Pills, and we would have, we would have gone in easy. Dougal Pills didn't even want to make the extra league, so that was a four and a half thousand pound fine, and that was a huge learning curve in the real professional world of Polish Speedway. That was hard. Yeah, that's one of the sort of things that's the most expensive flight in the world because you got to pay four and a half grand for uh, for fines and everything. But, yep. you know, it, it's one of those things. Like I said, you learn from it. You know, you know, just keep your passport in your back pocket all the time. You know, just things don't like help that. anyone on the aeroplanes. You <laughs> get your own bag up if you packed it too heavy, you tough titties. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, you sit there and watch everyone else struggle, you know. Yeah, yeah, I'm not helping anyone anymore. <laughs> too much of a nice guy, Cam. That's what it was. You're too much of a nice guy. Ah, uh, used to bite me in the ass a lot, being a nice guy, but anyway. 
I, yeah. <laughs> I still do it. I still do the same thing. It's ah, fine. there you go then. That's the main thing. But then obviously after that, then let's say um, in 2010, then you rode uh, again in Poland. And um, obviously, like I said, you, you mentioned that um, riding in Sweden in 08, you were with uh, Basana. Um, and that was that with Marsana? Uh, was that with with Lewis? My I don't remember. Uh, according to my things I've got, I wait, you did Vasana, and then obviously 2006, you did Get in Ghana. Um, did a few meetings with them. Uh, that, might oh, been with, that might have been with Lewis. Get, uh, getting Ghana was with Lewis, yeah. Mm-hmm. Marsana was Hagfors, yeah. Yeah. I did. That was pretty cool. That was, it was, uh, it was like six hours or four hours from the airport. It was a killer. Mm-hmm. Um, but they were a lovely club, and I had somewhere nice to stay and good food. So it was fine. Brief over your head, that's what matters. <laughs> yeah, yeah, that's it. <laughs> yeah, and obviously, it was, again, also in that sort of time in 2008 and everything, you managed to win the uh, Victoria State Championship again for a second time. Um, obviously, you managed to beat probably some of the, the good guys out there because I don't really know who lives in what state, so it's like trying to work out who you rode against. You know? <laughs> <laughs> um, I reckon the first year was good and then they somehow they changed the visas, so... Uh, it used to be Trav and Kevin. Everyone used to have to come home and race it to get their visas. But I think that second year, I might have beat Proctor. Mm. Um, but at the time, yeah, I don't think the visas were as hard. So it wasn't as stacked. Um, okay. But the state title had to be done for mm. me. It was it was usually at my home track or, or close to it. So I had some sponsors and that that needed to be looked after. So um, no, that, that was cool. I liked winning that one. Yeah, that's good because obviously you managed to win it three times. Um, yep. And again, the following year, 09, you managed to win it. So, and after that, you thought, nah, I don't have enough time to study doing it no more. <laughs> I don't know. I just, I got, well, I took it, took it for granted and started bloody yeah. losing. The, the, the next generation comes in. So, you, you get two years of being being the top kid, and then the next ones come through, and, and they've got that target straight away to aim at. Mm. So, um, they started doing to me what I was doing to the previous lot. So, yeah. It's not really a generation, but it usually is like two or three years between those junior waves. Um, so, yeah, I mean that's all good though, because obviously again it keeps you on your toes. You know, you know that it's look out for these boys when you come back over to Europe. You know, and things like that. So, yeah. But, but obviously, um, how did you get on like in the Aussie titles? And what was your sort of best score in that then? Because I'm, I'm going uh, second or third, I think was the best um, series I got. I reckon. Mm. Um, I always, I was always most on the podium at Mordura when the track was used to be terrible they, they've <laughs> reshaped it now and it's a lot better but um yeah ne- never never got number one there mm. um it was as again like you were saying it was every year was doily holder darcy mm. uh waddy rory so it was rory didn't do it towards the end um but it, it was always a pretty hefty top six yeah um which was you know probably stronger than the British final mm. at that stage, so um, it was pretty hard. Yeah, and I, and I sort of, I'm a the people that know me would know that I'm, I'm a bit of a tight ass. So I didn't bring my best <laughs> kid home. I, I'd bring stuff home that I was going to sell. Yeah, um, and that that was me cash <laughs> savings for the you know yeah. oh, every year I sold a bike uh, and then left one. Mm-hmm. So so I um, would keep that cash in in a safe, and that that was my retirement fund. <laughs> <laughs> which you ended up needing after uh, all the injuries yes. you know <laughs> yes that's it definitely <laughs> paying the hospital bills more than anything <laughs> yeah no nah, lucky with insurance and stuff like that but um yeah i, I paid a lot of money in insurance which was good so mm-hmm. i was blessed there yeah because obviously again the other titles you had the uh the holder and bachelor sort of battles over there and yeah, things like that because well. um yeah because obviously i think obviously you guys all being sort of like a similar sort of age bracket you know all fighting for like the aussie titles and obviously fighting for the right to get into the world team cup um, yep. and, and things like that so you know yeah you did like you said you did have a, a really hard time and everyone thinks that the adams and crump era was probably hard but you look at you guys as a new breed of let's say everyone around the similar age you're all pushing yep. each other sort of thing yeah, definitely, and that's what dragged us up, and, and made probably made me more successful than I could have been, mm. um, because I had that push and um, someone to chase. So, but uh, trying to remember what year it was, it wasn't my last. Under, it might have been my last under twenty ones. It was a Gilman in Adelaide, mm. and the final was uh, me, Doily, Batch, and see Chris, mm. and the first start, Doily carved me up in the first corner and I lost my steel shoe. I did two laps. So it was Doily was leading. I was second. 
think Bash might have been third and Chris was fourth. Did two laps without me steel shoe and then it bit in and had a crash. Oh. Late on the track and had a sulk and um, <laughs> didn't get me bike off the, the, the track and they had a restart and, and Doily, I don't think he'll forgive me ever, which is fair enough. Um, <laughs> so he had it one, he was gone. Mm. So they re-ran it. Um, I was obviously excluded and Chris jumped out and won his second or third in a row, which mm. uh, poor Doyle, he should have been Aussie under 21 champion one year at least, but he, he wasn't, but yeah. he got he got the big job done. So that was cool for him. Yeah, because I, so I say I remember the, the sort of like the rivalry between those three and obviously Holder, Bachelor, and Doyley at that time. Because obviously, um, I think I've got an Aussie under twenty one championship from 06 on DVD. I think it, it might have been even that one because I think I think Doyley was winning it, Holder pinched yep. it or something like that. And everything yep. you could see like Doyley's face. You think, oh crap, he's absolutely heartbroken, you know, and things oh, like that. Man. But um, yeah, it's good no, to see these sort of things. Yeah, it was. Um, we. I didn't, none of us wanted to bring it up at a World Cup catch up or something like that when we're all on the same team. Yeah. Um, Because it was pretty sore for him, which was fair enough. I would have been the same. So, Um, but yeah, it was, it was a great, it was horrible at the time because I (laughs) hated losing. I would have rather been king of the kids, but it it just, you know, all four, four, six of us were that much ramped up for going back to Europe Mm. because of those battles. It, it, It made us, you know, better than we than we could have been, I suppose. Yeah, exactly. And of course, then the other boys obviously managed to get into the Grand Prix and things like that. Unfortunately, you didn't quite make the Grand Prix, but you made the Grand Prix in the World Long Track, you know, and things like that. So you, on the flip side, you did it that way around. So that, I mean, you both made all of you made the World Championship in some way or another. Yeah, the 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 Grand Prix thing was, I never really put myself in that top sixteen in the world. Um, mm. The the year that I broke my leg, I, I was having a good year in Poland and Sweden. I don't think I was going that good in England, but I, I had some really good kit from John Z over in Poland and mm. um, I made it to the final in Lonigo that, that Doyle ended up winning and going, to, oh, no, he got second maybe and got into the Grand Prix. But that's that was two weeks before I snapped my leg. So mm. I I top point scored in Chester Hover in the semi. Um, the Doyle was in, so I beat Doyle in that. And then, yeah, snapped my leg in, in Lublin and, and um, Lemo rang me up on like the Tuesday or something. Hey, mate, you know, the FIM want you to give up your spot for Chris Harris. I'm like, nah, no way. I'll be riding. Don't worry about that. And then he rang me about five days later. Hey, mate, the FIM still ringing me. I don't think you're going to be able to ride, mate. I said, mate, I can walk 100 metres now. I'm good. I'm riding. <laughs> and, and we got to... Got to like the Wednesday or something before. Obviously, Chris would probably have to set off from England to get there yeah. in Italy. So he rang me up again. He's like, "Right, oh mate, are you going to ride? Because I, I know the boys haven't got your bikes ready." And I was like, mm. "No, nah, I'm not riding. But I don't want Chris Harris <laughs> to have my fucking spot. Give it to someone else." <laughs> Find another Aussie kid so, to put in there. <laughs> yeah, I worked so hard to get getting that final, and I would have rather just go and touch the tapes. But it was too hard to get from Italy to from Lublin to Italy with two bikes and I couldn't walk. I was a mess. So, mm. um, yeah, it was pretty heartbreaking, um, to watch that results as well, to see Doyle go through. I'll, I, I, I'll be honest. I wasn't ecstatic. No. <laughs> <laughs> I, was, I was just sour cause it was, uh, I, I firmly had it in my head. It should have been me. So, mm. um, that, it was a tough break, but it was, it was cool to, it would be nice to even just run in that final. Cause that was, you know, the best of the rest when it was, mm. the, yeah. it was, you know, from 16 down to 32. So mm. it would have been cool to have my name in that. Um, didn't happen. Um, no. But shit happens. Yeah, it's one of those things, unfortunately. You know, again, having a good year and everything, riding so much, because you're doing Denmark, Poland, Sweden, yep. England, as well as the grass track and the long track. You know, so you were pretty active. So, of course, consequently, all the results were coming in. It was a year that was going to be Cam's year. If anything was, anything was yeah. going to happen, it was going to be that year. Yeah. Yep, it, uh, a few people say to me, ah, oh, it must have broke your heart. And it did at the time, but mm. I, I'll be honest, it was inevitable. The way the way the sport is and the way I rode as well, <laughs> it was inevitable that I was going to get hurt because mm. um, I, I pushed things pretty hard. Um, as you said uh, before, I wasn't a trapper, so I had to come from the back bouncing off people's mudguards. <laughs> and um, 
Yeah, it's uh, that's that's life. But it's um, I'd do it all again. I would have rode just as hard in that race that I crashed, and um, yeah, I wouldn't change a thing really. Especially that one year, I think when you were at reserve and uh, Eastbourne had injury problems, they had ride replacement for someone. I can't remember who it was. And you were number number seven, seven rides every week, including the playoff mm. final against Paul. And it went, uh, you know, you think you had like again seven rides. You know, and you think how the hell is Cam still going? You know? Yeah, that that was. I, I uh, actually had an interview with Shane Childs yeah. uh, the other morning, um, and he brought up uh, Chris Older actually texted him and. and mm about that final and I rode off three bikes. Oh, I, I wrote, I think I had a win, a win in a second or something, then crashed my bike, mm. um, jumped on the spare. It was fast too, or won another race, wrote that off. And then Jonas is like, man, jump on this, <laughs> won a race on it. And I'm like, oh, we're away now. And then I, I, I think I wrote that off as well in, in heat 14 or something. So, uh, I loved, I loved riding. Um, Denmark, I loved. Uh, anyone that's ridden over there, they, you know, you almost if you score an okay, you get six rides every week. Um, so I loved that. It was just, it was a bit of a blur. It, you just riding your bike, you didn't have time to sit around and and um, dream up what you were thinking mm. or anything. It was just seat in your pants, just jump on the thing and ride it. Um, yeah, because. Yeah, 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 two two seasons in um in Denmark was um Slagdrum and then H- um Hosbro, wasn't it? You um yep. you yep. rode for. So I mean, w- how'd you get on in Denmark? Was it um a place that sort of suited you then in the long run? Or... It, it was cool. It was um uh, so the first year was with uh, Kenneth Hansen's yep. brothers team in in Copenhagen, mm-hmm. uh, and we with that was the first time I met Mikkel, mm-hmm. Mikkel Mikkels, um, and that was cool. And I was pretty pissed I didn't get into the next year. Um, but I was still, I think I still managed to just scrape in as a, like the highest average sea rider. Mm. Um, so um, Biani got me into Holsterbro, which wasn't convenient to get to. It was the very top of, of um, Denmark. And we used to drive from England. Um, yeah. <laughs> me and, me and Gienob. So it, it was hard work, but it, it was a, and to be honest, it, it wasn't a track that would suit me. It was uh, round and slick as slick, like like ice. Slick. Like as soon as the top layer come off, it was like polished. Oh Christ! <laughs> it was, and and you'd have so it wasn't a lot bigger than a little bit rounder than Eastbourne. So mm. what's what's Eastbourne two ninety or something? It might have been, yeah, yeah. Might have been three hundred and a little bit rounder, but we had like a fifty four on. <laughs> used to start with a 54 and I had a, I used to start with a 61 or something or 60 at Eastbourne. So <laughs> it was just uh, yeah. like a tractor around there. Yeah. So, but it was cool. We had some success. Um, Biani was really good to me there. I used to sleep in his, at, at his, he had this mad setup of a workshop with <laughs> the two vans could back in there and they still had a gym, um, mechanics quarters. Uh, you wash your bikes indoors. Um, it was it was sick. It was one of the coolest <laughs> workshops I've been to. So we spent a fair bit of time sleeping in there because mm-hmm. um, we used to – sometimes we used to go to Sweden and then back to back to his place after Sweden. So um, Porgy and I've earned his keep those, those, those two years. It was – man, we done some Ks. Yeah. Um, but Ash used to come along as well. Um, and, um, yeah, it was – that was some of the most fun of all been on the road. So mm-hmm. – um, first World Cup. I'm I'm just jumping ships. Sorry, yeah, it's but, fine. No worries. Uh, for, <laughs> first World Cup. Lemo rang me. We just finished in Marmond, mm. I reckon, uh, for the long track. And we we I knew I wasn't going to be the, looked into the World Cup because I was driving riding the long tracks. Mm-hmm. Anyway, got drove in me and Ginob, and uh, I think we might have unpacked. I don't know. I don't think we unpacked. We just, we just, <laughs> the, the, the Chester Hover, the first round, yeah. the Aussies were on, and we got absolutely smoked. And poor Waddy had, um, that was sort of, it was a tough year for him anyway. So mm. he didn't have a very good one. And Ginob and I are like real tired, got a bit of snooze in trying to keep ourselves awake. <laughs> and and he get, looks at me and he goes, You watch, we'll get a phone call shortly. <laughs> I'm like, nah, nah, there's other boys going faster than me. No yeah. way. Sure enough, the meeting hadn't even finished. Bring, bring. 
I looked again up, and he's like, nah. <laughs> hey, Lemo. And he's like, again, I was like, no. He's like, you got to get on a flight and get your get your Polish bikes to, to uh, Prague, mate. You're on. And I'm like, I'm not taking my Polish bikes. They're shit. I'm, I'm taking my English <laughs> bikes. And he's like, whatever. Whatever you got to do, I'm going to book you a flight. I said, I'm not flying. I'm, I'm driving. He's like, nah. No, this is ridiculous. You're meant to be professional. You're flying. I said, poke your flight up your ass. You can book it. I don't care. I'm not getting on it. Book it. Yeah. Do what you want. But I'm not getting on it. So me and Ginob clean bikes all day. And then we had to leave that next night. So if, if we got in, if we rolled in Sunday night, I reckon it was Sunday night, we had to be in Prague Wednesday. So we yeah. washed bikes all day Monday. And then we had to, it, practice was Tuesday. So we drove that night, that Monday mm. night, me, Ash, and Ginob. But it was the best fun of the lot. It, we just talk shit, listen to each other's music, yeah. which was all real weird. Um, Ash was it mad into Led Zeppelin and that. Um, <laughs> Old school. Which was fine. It was, yeah, we all, we all had to give and take a little bit, but mm. that was the best fun of all, just hanging out with those two guys and just clocking the Ks and that vanish. You'd be like, oh, oh, we're in a, we're in the chest. Check already. That's cool. Yeah, Just delirious. But um, yeah, those, those kilometers and like no one was driving from England to Sweden, mm. and we'd I would you know would do Saturday night. I'd fly to Poland Sunday, mm. and I wanted to fly straight from Poland back to Sweden, but I, I didn't. I'd fly back to England and then we'd drive Monday to Sweden, um, which was yeah, it was hard. It was. I think it was 17 hours to to um, Simon's home track in um, so, Kumla, wouldn't it? it would have been Kumla yeah, then. Kumla. Yeah. So, yeah, 17 hours, and then <laughs> our, our rest day was Denmark. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, beyond his place, you know, crash yeah, beyond his place. <laughs> Get ready to race that night. So, yeah. but I loved it. It was so cool. We we were delirious because we were that tired. Um, but. It, it was amazing that the, mm-hmm. the busier we got, the more fun we were having. Yeah, because it's, it's the road trip to the location. It's not necessarily the meeting. Is that's always the yep. best thing to remember? It's the, it's the how you got there, you know. And especially yep. like you said, all those boys like I don't know, like like Holder or something like that, would just fly and have mechanics there ready and waiting. You, Gear Dob and Ash were the crew near enough. Yep. And obviously, you must have had a bit of help in some of the other places, but mainly they were the mainly they were the, the main three that you had. Yeah, yeah, definitely. But it was um. The cool thing about being delirious, uh, which was similar to being hungover, but I don't encourage that, no. was your 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 imagination and your your demand of yourself. Your all this expectation, you'd know, like you'd you'd work all week, you'd mm. you'd prepare your bike all week, and you'd drive to the meeting. You'd feel fresh, but you'd be tired, and you'd be nephagic and you'd just be this pressure would be building inside you that was horrible and, and you couldn't perform under it mm. when you're tired or hung over you just roll in just oh, just get it done so i have a share and go home mm. and that was when you performed the best it was it was weird for me yeah. um because i'm a, i'm a massive overthinker um <laughs> with work that i've got now and stuff i yeah. i beat myself up big time it's mm. it's it's not a it's not a quality but mm-hmm. it's um yeah, that's how it is. Yeah, it's good though. I mean, I can, I can kind of relate to that because when I, I went up in America, I, I literally shipped the bike out there, built it, I flew in, built it, and rode the next day, sort of thing. It yep. didn't quite work out for me because I rode at industry, and instead of being the track like it normally is, slick and fairly easy to ride, it was like that deep. And I thought, oh, get okay, put some what, what, my English gear in, put an English gear in on. No, straight up in the fence, first race. I thought, oh, great, that's when I start my meeting. And then I realized I missed something out of my clutch. And then me, every time I did a start, my chains went loose. And I was like, oh my God, just go home. I'm going to go home. So, yeah. <laughs> sort of thing. But uh, yeah, so I, I understand what that sort of thing is. But I wish I flew in a few days earlier. But I had similar stuff. I lost my, I lost my passport, I lost mine. So, uh, <laughs> so they've been out there for, yeah. so they've been out there for like, uh, uh, four weeks I was only out there for three I missed the whole weekend I missed one meeting which would have been cool to ride but um, mm. you know it's things like that so I kind of understand your, your, your pain you know so yeah you're a superstar I'm not but I can relate to the same thing <laughs> I wasn't a superstar in America me and mm. well me and Bridger Party like we were but we, yeah. we had two good tours over there mm. um, at uh, Fast Fridays so that was pretty cool oh yeah because you did the, the rest of the world thing didn't you 
that, yep. that was it. Yep. Yeah. Yeah. So the first one was, I'm pretty sure. No, uh, it might have been straight after. I my ears are all scattered. It was after a final in pool, so I don't oh, know yeah. if it was. I don't think it was the one we won for the the cup. I reckon it was the one we lost mm. when I rode all those bikes off. We flew out to America that Monday, I reckon. Um, so we parted in Brighton. Um, <laughs> we parted in Brighton one night, and yeah. then we booked our flights and then flew out. Um, so me and Bridger carved up America. It was good fun. Yeah, yeah, because there, there are always good fun times out there and things like that. I mean, I never rode at Fast Fridays, but um, it, I've seen it on YouTube and everywhere like that. But um, yeah, it's good fun out there. It's different, again, yeah. a different way of lifestyle, you know, and things like that. You know, it's, They've um, done us up a keeper, similar, you know, you said about the track. So yeah. we got there um, for the practice, which was the day before. Both years we got there and it was concrete, just <laughs> bridges got both legs off like no goggles on no gloves just like the god that he is <laughs> and and I, I bought an open face helmet and we were just being idiots because it's so easy to ride mm. we rocked up the next day after party and it was that tacky and it was we shit ourselves but yeah anyway we got through it no it was good but i think remember you doing something like that at eastbourne one night you decided to take your cam lines in your boots took your helmet your peak off your helmet i think it was as well and uh you rode a race like that i think it was trying to do like a trevor gear impression i think it was <laughs> or something Straight like leg. That. <laughs> yeah that's it your boot you were t- i think it was tucked in your boots and everything you know pretty old school and everything everyone looks like, what is he doing what is he doing rocks I, up i hope i didn't get last because i would have looked like an absolute I don't think he did. I think he got like a, a winner or a second or something like that. But it was like, you look like a right <laughs> idiot sort of thing. No, no peak, no nothing. <laughs> I think I seen a photo the other day on Facebook or something. And it, yeah, it was it was pretty goon and that's for sure. Yeah, yeah. No, I always think it's the Trevor Gear impression now. Whenever I see yep. something like that, it's the Trevor Gear impression. That. Yeah, exactly. But um, no, I mean, it's good to hear. But also one question is, um, how did you sort of like work your way into the grass track and the long track scene? So I was struggling for meetings it was just before i cracked like i had a bit of polling so after i lost the passport i got the big fine Mm. um they wouldn't release my bikes till i paid the fine so i had to drive over there and give them the cash it was well it was a horrible experience anyway (laughs) lee richardson was there um Mm. for an open meeting and he was really cool he he had my back a bit and um got me through that tough time so i I credited him um big Mm. time for that really hard time in my life. Um, he he was, yeah, really patient. And <laughs> yeah. He'd been he'd been through it all, um, mm. so it was cool for him to help out. But after that, no one would touch me in Poland. So I went to Mischgold uh, in yeah. Hungary, which was um, in the same league at the time, and they didn't pay any bills. So I, I'd go one week and they'd pay me half, and I'd not go a week, and then I'd go the following week. So. I th- I'm pretty sure it was that year I Jonas is like, man, these long track bikes, they're cheap. You can use the same engine. Just uh, just do that. <laughs> so he got me a, a Stuart chassis for next to nothing, but they're only three pieces on a very, very expensive bike. So anyway, so I bought, I bought the chassis the, or the diamond, the front end and the, the back end and no shock, no mud guards. <laughs> it's not a speedway bike. So, not a gearbox. So um, I was headbutting the wall at Mischgolz. It was horrible. Um, so by the end of the year, I reckon I had, um, by the end of the year, I had the whole bike together and I did a grass track meeting at Collier Street, maybe with mm. David Howe, mm. I reckon. And he yeah. beat me in the heats, and then he beat me in the final. And he was the same. He he'd done the the pole, and he 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 had a hugely successful junior career, like mm-hmm. under twenty ones and that. And then he sort of, you know, got in a bit of a rut, I suppose, after yeah. the Wolverhampton thing. So he was the same. He he built a bike, and we, we raced. I think he might have done a few more grass tracks before me, and he obviously did the junior program. But mm-hmm. um, we raced each other and had a good time. And then we both signed for this this German lady who was apparently a manager um <laughs> it, it was an experience which I, I i won't she might watch so but anyway <laughs> she was lovely but her, her husband was a prick yeah. um so 
the next year, I reckon me and Dave doubled up on a few meetings that got rained off. Um, but we hanged out. It was cool. I, I really liked David Howe. He's a very cool, very funny guy. And, and Booney's father that passed away, he, yeah. he was a very funny guy as well. So me and that was early days. So me and Ash and him did a bit of that and that was fun. Um, and then I did a little bit of grass track and then they would tr- the boys, I think because the, 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 masters or whatever the british final it didn't count for anything mm. in the grass track scene so the boys were running the grand prix like andrew appleton and glenn glenn, uh, phillips, um, that that one, glenn phillips and that they didn't have to run in it so um the acu and i forget the lady's name uh mother of a really successful sidecar rider um on the grass oh she was amazing. She she helped us all us Aussies out with our we at one stage we went through the British license because mm. um, the MA were, they were an absolute nightmare with insurance and stuff. So we did that. Um, oh, it comes to you, man. It comes to you, man. <laughs> Her sons won like everything on a sidecar. He, he's awesome. But um, so yeah, it'll come uh, if I go out of Speedway Star, which I haven't <laughs> seen one for about three or four uh, six years, maybe. But um. She was pushing pretty hard. I think her and maybe Graham Hurry, I can't remember who was pushing for me, but they thought, they said, look, let's chuck Cameron in if these other boys don't want to ride. Um, the stand is not good enough to be called a British final. Um, so let's, let's piss some people off. So they, they chucked me in yep. um, and I won it. Mm. Um, and it pissed a lot of people off. Um, I wasn't very popular on the grass, but <laughs> I didn't really care. Um, and then and then they, the FIM... I did a Grand Prix. I did the Grand Prix qualifier for Aussie, and it was like I turned up late. I got a fine for being late because <laughs> purely f- from flights and and actually having a racing career, not just being a part timer. Um, anyway, they dragged me through the coals and they they wrote a report for being up me being unprofessional for not turning up on time with the MA. It was a mess. Hmm. Anyway, the next year they give me the wild card of in the Grand Prix. I was like, oh, cool. So I got very lucky so but mm. i shouldn't have been in a british final and i i didn't earn myself in a grand prix mm. um but the rest of the history I, I i i took the chance that i i got with both of them and i thank the people that made that happen um Jonas would have been a big pusher for the, the world yeah. grand prix thing um and also i had some good results in france i reckon thierry Henry mm. um pushed pretty hard for me um so yeah i i the grass track was just let's build a bike and have, have, feel it out and do some laps. Yeah. As soon as I built it, you, Poland and Sweden and that just went crazy and it was it was almost an inconvenience. It was mm-hmm. um I got a I didn't get fined but I missed a, a Polish meeting through injury through crashing in Marmond which mm-hmm. wasn't very popular at all. They left me out the following week just to make a point. Um so. And that was that was what was paying the bills, Poland. So it was um, it tore me a little bit the, the 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 grass track and long track thing. So I I caught a bit of abuse. I did a the very last Collier Street, mm. um, the second last one, Mitch Godden run, and it was the best grass track I've ever <laughs> in my life. It was amazing. We drove back from Vector from a Grand Prix, mm. drove all night, rolled in, um, won every race, and broke a belt in the final. Which sucked, so it didn't didn't make a cent. <laughs> uh, <laughs> didn't even pay for the methanol, no. but um, it uh, that was amazing. And then we were like, "Yep, we'll do the very last one." That's you know, a bit of respect, mm-hmm. and is you know, it was a cool. It's a sad thing for that to go. And it rained all night, and we rolled in, and there's a big river running across the track, and I'm like, "We're not riding, man. That's this is this is horrid." So we, they got the tractor out, and I was out there telling them what I needed. And the sidecar boys were telling them what they needed and they just did what the sidecar boys wanted. Mm-hmm. Totally ignored me, which fair <laughs> enough because it sounded funny and probably was being a little bit rude as well. I wasn't yeah, rude, but no. I might have been perceived as rude. But um, So I refused to ride. I, I packed up um, and I had a heap of abuse hurled at me leaving the joint. But we stopped and watched the... Paul Cooper, I remember, he's like, mate, it'll be fine. Just get out. You'll make the start and just just chug around, just get paid. 
I'm like, no, it's it's wrong. We this is just not safe. And I only know how to ride full gas. I don't know how to chug around. So, <laughs> um, watched him off the start, and he went in the first corner, lost the front end, done his knee, and nearly finished his career. So, mm. I made the cho- right choice that day, but I got a heap of abuse on Facebook and on the on the forums and stuff, which mm. sucked. And I sort of wasn't interested in riding much. I went and won the British final again that year, but it just yeah left a bit of a sour mm. taste in my mouth. So. Yeah, but I, I think, loved it. I did love the grass. It was good fun. Yeah, because you're so you had you had the results, and I mean, again, you compare yourself with David Howe. We had David Howe on the show previous, and um, he said about um, basically how he got bored of Speedway, wanted something different, and did the grass. Of course, I remember then when you both did it. I think yeah, the first meeting you did was like twenty two. Was like the Kent Cracker. I think it was something like that. Yep. And that's where you came second to, to David um, in that one. And you think, oh, Cam could do it. Actually, he's got a bit of you got a bit of something here that could do it. And obviously, like you said put yourself into the British Championships and I thought even myself thought what's an Australian doing the British Championships for <laughs> what was he doing it you know? it was not a meeting it was <laughs> yeah, playing yeah. the bills <laughs> yeah I think it was you and um, Alex Davis at the time um, were the only two like Aussies and even, I think that might have been Robert, Rodney McDonald as well were the only sort of yep. Aussie blokes who did the British finals at that time you know yep. I think that sort of thing yep. and then obviously you debut you go in there and piss everyone off and win it you know <laughs> that's what it is but um you know, you're there to make money, you're there to win races. That's what it is. Yeah, that's it. Yeah, it didn't matter what it was called. It, you just wanted to win it. So mm. um, that was at Frittenden, I think. Uh, yeah. No, was it? Something like that. It was, that was a cool little b- bouncy track. That was fine. What what I always struggled with in probably Poland more so than England. Oh, you yeah. there? Yeah, How are you playing videos? Well, this is this um, is your this is your master's victory from the first year, and I've got both starts in it as well. So, oh, cool. oh there's two starts, was there? Yeah, it was, <laughs> I can't a, remember. There was a crash. I, I watched it back. So that, that was obviously my first year in the Grand Prix because me and Jonas had the same covers and the same Kevlar. Oh, I had leathers, but yeah, um, we ran a bit of a team, which which looked cool, and that's what the FIM love. Yeah. So I didn't whole shot that, did I? No, but. Yeah, because I, I think I remember watching you win your first one and things like that. But uh, yeah, so you racing down the back straight there. Yeah, it's it's I I, I love this was a really cool track and I loved riding Glenn. He was he was super fair. Um, but look at him; he, he looks like he's just having fun. I, I'm I'm racing for the bloody sheep stations and he, <laughs> he's just cruising. Yeah, but, um, he, he was a good guy. He used to make a lot of my guards and stuff. And um, yeah, to the he, he was fast. Oh, there we go. Yeah, Hit the red front flag. Bloody red flag it. Oh, oh someone's down. Someone's down. I don't know who it was because I can't remember who it was in, in that one. But yeah, so, I mean, obviously the first start, you think, yeah, well away. Then obviously you see the red flag come out and you think, oh, shit, here we go again. Sort of thing. I, I, I felt this was, this was, um, I f- you had a lot more time in this. Um, mm. With grass as well, with being heaps of ruts and holes and stuff. This is the other thing. So all these boys... <laughs> with the start line they they used to say oh you, you've got to go off the inside or, or whatever she a few people were trying to coach me and all i gave a shit about was which was the straightest deepest rut that i wouldn't bottom out on yeah that's all that's all i cared about it didn't and i've gone center there obviously but yeah. um i think my second one i went off like gate eight or whatever because it was just i just walked there before and it was the straightest most beautiful <laughs> rut and i'm like that's me. That's that's all I need. So yeah. Um, but yeah, because uh, um, yeah, because obviously then you you take the sort of like the speedway approach, and isn't it? You know, looking for something straight. As long as you can find yeah, it straight, yeah, you're, you're fine. Well, there's, there's no point going off the inside, and it's been a as a big S bet. You know, you know, you just end up in a big tank. So you have to get out of the gas. So, mm-hmm. um, yeah, it, I I really seeing this now. I did really love it. It was um. I, I was very fortunate they they got me into it and I, and I loved it and I, yeah. I hope I entertained it was sort of it was it's it was sort of oh that was an even better start yeah really beauty <laughs> <laughs> but it, it, I remember Mitch Godden telling me the first run I ran I think it was a Kent Crack or something and the start line was on the like conventional in the middle of the track yeah like oh, like like a speedway and he goes, oh, you wait till there's an off off start track that sorts out the men from the boys. <laughs> but uh, I felt that more fun because it was more opportunity for the, the other boys to shut off, and I just kept it on. 
yeah, um, you, so, way, way you went, sort of thing, you know. But, yeah. Uh, but, uh, obviously, you see the boys here battling it for second and third whilst you're long yeah, gone. Cooper, man. <laughs> Cooper and, and Glenn. So. He, he's a lovely bloke, too, Paul Cooper. I, if if you want to talk to someone very entertaining and yeah. speaks really well, you, you should give Paul a ring. He's he's a funny man. Yeah, I've got a recommendation right there. Then, you know. yeah. <laughs> but uh, yeah, and obviously, this was like, I'd say, on the way to win your first Masters title, you know, and. Uh, and things like that. So, I mean, must have it must have felt weird, but felt good at the same time to win it, you know, because obviously being an Aussie and all that sort of thing. Yeah, it was. I suppose me, me great grandparents were probably English or something. Mm. Uh, I think, I think some were Welsh and some were Scottish. But I even did a wheelie. I didn't, yeah. do, didn't do any of them. But <laughs> I'd like that. Uh, so, uh, yeah, it, we. So it wasn't weird for me because um, when I was eighteen. And battling for the Aussies, or I was only 21, but um, Scott Nichols got a wild card into the Aussies. Oh, and right. that pissed off a lot of people because uh, him and Charlie Jetta, it was so. So two young Aussies uh, lost their 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 right yeah. to ride all the <laughs> titles um, for at that expense, but it needed it, it needed to pick it up. So um, I, I rode in that one and and. Um, had some good tussle with those two boys, so it it was normalish for me. Yeah. Um, so it didn't bother me at all. No, no, because I think I remember seeing that about Scott, and I think Screen did it once as well, and things like that. Yep. You know, you know, and uh, I think I think that was one of the years where it was like all the top boys, mostly were there. Adams, Crump. Yeah. Uh, I, think uh, I think didn't you go, didn't you go to the, like the showground? Sydney maybe it was one year that you did there. Yep. Yeah. Yep. yep. We did. Oh, it was the. I think it was called Sydney Showgrounds, but it was like a a baseball pitch. So mm. it's it was a a right angle the first corner, and then the rest of it was just one big corner, like a mm. a, a diamond of a like a, the the baseball field. So yeah, yeah so Jono, everything, everyone rode in that. That was a really cool year, and and I was nineteen or something. So it was that's how Aussie titles should be. Yeah. Um, it's hard because it's a long way to bring all kid home um, for Aussies and for foreigners. Mm. Um, I remember when I was like 15, they used to have the tap series. Oh, yes. Which was yeah. which was huge. So, Ricards and Billy Hamill, Amalenko, they had every world champion come like for three or four years in a row. Um, yeah. So, we did a f- – I didn't get into Speedway until I was 13 or 14, I think. But um, we did – like a lot of those tracks around us and it was so cool. <laughs> uh, Ronnie Corey and just mm. all those guys. They're having fun, but like they, they knew how to turn it on too. So um, that was that that was the only real speedway we seen, mm. um, the TAP series, other than we used to have recordings of the of the World Championship that we used to watch on VCR until they were worn out. Um, and we used to know each result. You couldn't put bets on races because no. you knew every single race. So, um, but yeah, yeah, good times, good times though. But yeah, maybe that's what Australia needs is something like that again. You know, something like a few with a few big foreigners trying to come back over and you know and take on the local talent sort of thing. Really, it it, it is. It's 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 a really hard ask because of oh, COVID. Like, yeah, well, everything. But but let's say before, before COVID, COVID it, it, yeah. It's, it's, um, I'm trying to think what it would cost me to bring two bikes home. It would, it's something like, or there and back would be like 1500 quid. So mm. it's, it's a lot of money. And then obviously flights that, that no promoter here is going to put up to get everyone out. Um, Darcy's running Brisbane now, or he's going to yeah, take on that, Brisbane, yeah. which, yeah. which is a huge thing. So if he can get some people involved and, and some money, um, it might happen. Mm. It, if this COVID thing keeps ravishing Europe, you know, that it might be the big boys want to come here and ride next summer because yeah. we're relatively COVID free. Um, so that like, we're just, we're about to start the Australian open of tennis. So mm. no one can run tennis because everywhere is ruined, but <laughs> um, the Australian government's flown out um, the, the males and females and they've hotel quarantined for 14 days and they've whinged like crazy. Yeah. Um, we're going to have a tournament so because yeah. we're, we're, we're um, COVID free. So um, it's pretty cool. So maybe that might happen. I don't, I don't know, but no. um, I'm not, I'm not getting into the promotion side. Or <laughs> I don't like politics and I haven't got a lot of money. So no, no, there you <laughs> um, go. So I, I won't be doing that, but 
I'll, I'll referee these yeah. big means for, yeah. for Darcy. That'll be right. Yeah, yeah, but bit more than a beer though. You get paid more than the beer. You'd be all right then. Uh, uh flights, <laughs> flights and a beer will be fine. Yeah, and if I can stay at his house, that'd be all right. Yeah, yeah, because I'm sure he's got some toys you can play with. <laughs> yeah, yeah, he's got a really nice place. I, I when I was travelling up there for my for my original for my FEMA, mm. I went and seen him. Um, and he's got a beautiful house um, that's all catered for, for you know, the circumstances he's in yeah. now. So, um, and I seen him uh, four or five weeks ago. He mm-hmm. flew to Mordura, and he's in a really good place. So um, good. I was really pumped to see him do the Brisbane thing because um, he he said he's been bored, but he, he's in a really good place. And um, he's, I hope it's common knowledge, but he they're going to have a baby not far after mm-hmm. us. So with the same sort of journey as us so that's cool uh, that's that's really cool mm-hmm. so um he's got a lot to live for and um yeah i'm stoked for him mm-hmm. obviously of course i imagine it hit yourself hard and obviously other aussie boys bad when the when you heard about darcy's crash um yeah yep. and things like that i mean how, how did you sort of react to that sort of thing and obviously you know you know you knew darcy quite well obviously i imagine yeah so I was already injured, so it probably hit me different to the other boys that were racing, um, and they had to go racing afterwards. I had a similar... Um, so I, we just all pretty much been through the Lee Richardson. Um, yeah. Instantly. I think it was only two or three years earlier. Mm. Um, so that whole group had been through that, and Lee was really popular with all us Aussies as well because um, he had done some tours when he was 16, 17, 18 in Aussie mm. as well. Um, so... That hit harder. Um, that was that was really really hard um, to get through. And my mum and my mum and I, I think we'd flown to Poland a week mm-hmm. or two previously with him. Oh right. Um, so, so the Lee thing was probably harder. And mm-hmm. and obviously I, I was I was um, injured and, and not riding. Mm-hmm. Um, oh, new battery. Um, so it, it hit me different to the other boys. So, yeah. but it was terrible. Like the the best rider of his generation crashing and putting himself in a wheelchair is scary because the rest of us are subpar to him. So mm. if, if it happens to him, you know, it can happen to all of us. So yeah. that, that invincibility cloak that we, <laughs> that we all drape over our shoulders every night mm. um, was a little bit see-through. So um, yeah, it was, it was hard and I messaged him a bit and, um, it was the unknown was horrible too because he was in Poland, so he was getting looked after really good. Like the the treatment I got in Poland was, you know, it's better than some of the hospitals I've been in England. So <laughs> um, there was no, no, there was no, you know, nervousness about that. It was just, mm. you know, not hearing anything. Yeah, that, that's the thing. I mean, again, like you say, it's, it's fearing the unknown of anything you know, um, whether it's injury or, or whatever. But um, before we just sort of like touch on um, your your injury sort of thing, unfortunately, which obviously ended the career, I've got a bit of um, footage from uh, Eastbourne, which I which I bought the other day. Um, I thought I'd play. It's the KO Cup final, semi-final. So we're well at Eastbourne, on not we? We'll turn the volume down a bit. Hang on, a bit loud. <laughs> uh, We've got there. Timo. Yeah, Robert, that's it. Yeah, that's it. Um, who's that, Mads? Uh... No, I think that's no, Morton Risinger, I think it is, something like that. Oh. So, so it's... Um, Stay, and from the outside... Got a little bit of commentary for it, but... That's the line-up, heat number two. So the big high mud guards. And... Three nights on, up yeah. by the tapes. And out of bone, Kevin Walbert off gate number two. He leads the way as the rain starts to fall here. Good bit of rerun commentary. You know, can't beat it. <laughs> Good old Steve. Good. Timo Larty at the back of Woodward comes through on the inside of the German. Here comes Walbert back on the inside. Three big action to start with here this evening but it is Woodward who leads away then from yeah, see, Woodward in second place taking everyone apart already at East Bull you know uh, the, I wish uh, I wish there was more wins I, 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 I wish I had trapped more I used to like the fresh air I didn't have enough of it no exactly exactly captain Cameron Woodward who leads away I mean, it's just good to see you obviously riding well and things like that, you know. And I think this was the time when you were obviously doing the seven rides every week and, uh, yeah. and things like that. So, this, well, this is the year that we lost to Paul the Uh Yeah, it would have been. Yeah, I think it would have been. So, 
Yeah. Which was really cool this year because we were picked for like last week. We had all just, Moulton again, like the Edinburgh thing we were talking about. Six, seven oh, point average riders. Two, yeah. Cam, well, he had to do some hard work to Biani find a way past. Yeah, Biani was our number one. Yeah. Recently recruit for Paul, but coming through. Yeah, I, I really enjoyed place. this year because we were all just Kevin Walbert. Yeah, it was yeah. it was a cool cool bunch of blokes, and we were picked for nothing, and we made the final, mm -hmm. um, which was really cool. Yeah, because I thought you had um, Simon in the team. Uh, so Timo, Jonas. Jonas, yeah, so Timo was just breaking through. Um, yep. and, and, yeah, and everyone just sort of clicked, you know. Like you said, ruled right to come near the bottom of the league, you know, like East one were for most years, unfortunately. Yeah. Um, and then, uh, yeah, you know, playoff final against Paul, local derby. So unfortunately, they, they just slightly pictured because they kept revamping their team, you know, <laughs> with, yeah. with, with everyone else. <laughs> like they always did. Like Matt Ford used to just wave his magic wand and pull another Yunoski or someone, Paliki, yeah. <laughs> out, and you'd be like, holy shit. <laughs> yeah, it was kind of another person with, a, with the old surname Ski at the end of it. You know, he was, he was oh. in. <laughs> and they're all heat leaders from Poland. Like, it was yeah. like, he used to pull the blanket over everyone over here, over mm. in England. It was, you, but it, it, again, it was the internet wasn't huge. Yeah, um, we didn't get Polish league, but like now you watch Polish league and that mm. you like it's it's yeah. the form league now, and there's no way you'd let a heat leader come in at six points or five points in pool now. Yeah, um, but exactly. at the time he's just go, hey, this guy has ridden once or twice. Boom, just a freak. Yeah. He's an amateur, he's an amateur, you know, he doesn't know what he's yeah. doing. Or yeah, like, nah. he's, he's back Rough. in. <laughs> yeah, exactly. But obviously, we just need to touch on obviously what happened to you in Lublin because obviously that's unfortunately what curtails your career. Um, I'm assuming it was a it was a Polish league match that happened. It wasn't an open meeting um, that it happened. No, it was, it was it was a playoff final to stay oh. in the second in the the first division. So mm. um, it was against Dargo Pills. So Jonas. And Rory were against me, and it was me and Waddy were mm -hmm. in the same team. So I'm pretty sure, yeah. So we had to, we were, well, I think we lost by 10 or something in Dugger Pills. So mm. we had a pretty easy one. We used to smash people at Lublin. So, mm. um, and first heat, um, who a lot of boys have had dramas with, and I've forgotten his name now. He was a Latvian fella. He wrote, um, I reckon he's written in one or two Grand Prix and was European it, finals. Uh, Paul Dukes, was it? Bo Bogdanov. Oh, Bogdanov. No, Bogdanov. Right. So the loosest Latvian in <laughs> the world. Yeah. He he popped out in front of me in heat one. I think it was heat one, I reckon. So, and um, for, did a full lap. And then we went over the start finish line. I bounced off the wall. And he just went from into the corner to... Full lock, like he was at Eastbourne. Oh yeah, we were on the biggest track in Poland, mm -hmm. and I just ran in, ran into his ass. I just stood it up and hit his back wheel and uh, did a somersault and mm -hmm. leg hit first on the ground, and it was just so fast there. It was so really long straights, like Swindon, but another mm -hmm. fifty meters bigger. Um, oh, okay, yeah. So it was super fast. Um, yeah, I I clipped his back wheel. He just he just went in and just parked and looked at me and <laughs> yeah the rest is history so um I landed on my ass eventually when I stopped tumbling and my leg was facing the wrong way and uh, I was, oh that's a bit uncomfortable and I grabbed <laughs> it and flicked it straight and that didn't help it still still hurt uh, it didn't hurt it burnt it, yeah. adrenaline is a beautiful thing it just had this burning sensation um and then. I'll, I'll remember it till the day I die. This this doctor who'd been really good. I'd, I'd been having dramas with my wrist, and I'd seen him a few times. And he took me, got X-rays and stuff. Previous meetings, he comes up. He goes, Cameron, you okay? I said, No, nah, no, nah, I've broken my femur. And he's he's a doctor. He's like, <laughs> No, nah, mate, you'd know if you broke your femur. I said, Pick me foot up then. <laughs> and he and he and he went like that. And he's like, You broke your femur. Calm down. Relax. Like he spoke really like almost American accent. He watched yeah. a lot of MTV, obviously. And then he's he's shouting at the the first the first aid or ambulance guy, and the ambulance guy shouted back at him. Mm. And then this ambulance, the doctor went bright red and just started going off his nut and said "curva," 
which we all know is not good. So mm. I grabbed the doctor by the throat and I said, what's going on? What's wrong? Like, am I dying? And he's like, no, only paracetamol curva. <laughs> and I'm like, oh, 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 that's all we got is paracetamol. Cool. Oh, great. <laughs> so they got me on the stretcher and Polish roads are pretty awful, apart mm. from the ones the European Union have built now. And, um, Bounced me way to the the hospital and and um and then really cool. So um the Speedway fraternity is pretty cool. So uh, Waddy, Rory, and Jonas all come to the um hospital afterwards, where I was still waiting to see someone and on the morphine, and they took some photos and had a bit of laugh with me and phoned my mum, um which was cool, put her um at ease a little bit. And uh, and then phoned Gearnob so Gearnob could speak to me. It was only my girlfriend at the time, but yeah. Naomi and let her know I was okay, but not okay. And um, yeah, I was in a hospital. It didn't look that great from inside. I had really old green tiles and stuff, but I had my own room mm. and I had the surgeon come and see me every morning and I had a physio twice a day for the whole two weeks. They wouldn't let me leave for the two weeks. Okay. Unless I'd try to skip the border to, to Italy <laughs> for the final. Um, but so every day I had to walk up a little bit further and they had a they had this mechanical machine that used to make me bend my knee because mm. there was so much swelling and stuff. And they used to ice pack me and pressure. It was <laughs> like, I don't like ripping the piss out of England, but the, the hospital staff and, and the care that I got and, it felt so much more advanced than what, mm. what I'd ever experienced because I'd been to a few hospitals in in <laughs> um, in England too. I've been yeah. to Staines. That was yeah. a really horrible experience. Dad and I went to looking for Ali, Ali G. Mm. Um, I had a hematoma in my femur yeah. the year before and we got out of there. That was horrendous. <laughs> I've been to one in Wolverhampton, which was really rough. Yeah. Eastbourne, I'd been to several times. <laughs> um, but, this, but Poland were amazing and it yeah. turned out Everyone else had six deep in each room, mm. but the the promoter at the time, his wife was the mayor. So um, over there, it's you know the the whole city and the shire and the hospital all worked together, and, and they mm. really looked after me. So I was blessed there. So thank you very much to Lublin Hospital and everyone that helped me out there. Well, that's good to hear. And obviously, then mm. it was then you found out later on that uh, it's basically a game game over. Because didn't you sign for Coventry in 2015 if they were going to run? Yep. Um, yep. And if if you were able to ride again, so that must have given you a bit of hope that you could come back. Yeah. So I was pretty nervous. I I went and got a bone graft <clears throat> on my femur because it wasn't healing up in mm. Brisbane, and um, yeah. So I got to. I had it all go. I, I was in discussion. So I, when I was over there with, with my broken femur, I went to um, the motor, motorcycle show or something, and mm. was talking to Javi and all that. And it was sort of, it was almost a done deal. Um, yeah, then mm. before I come home, and then we got to, I reckon we got to Feb or something, and I'm just like, where are you? There's, I can't even walk still. Yeah. Uh, it might, I might, I give him as much time as I, I reckon it, it wasn't much after my birthday. I, I'm just after new year's. So I, I reckon I phoned him just after, um, and given the shit news, which is terrible for them. Cause you know, you got your, you've got your bank of riders and your averages working together and then yeah. some spud pulls out on you <laughs> for the year. So that was, re- that was a really hard phone call, but I just felt it was right to give them as much notice as possible. Um, and then I, I reckon I got to mid year that year and it still wasn't healing. Uh, and I, I called it quits. I was like, no, nah, wife's it'll be girlfriends over here. Mm-hmm. Um, I'm going to have to make a go of it here because it just, nothing was healing. Nothing was working. And, um, so I, so 2015, I'd pretty much called off. Uh, so we got the end of, two, so it was 2016. I, yeah. <clears throat> thought I'd have a skid because they told me my leg was healed and then I crashed and broke my hip. So <laughs> I was never, the the riding in Aussie was purely, I'd seen what Crumpy and at the time Billy Hammer were doing. I was like, mm. oh, I'm just going to have some fun. 
fun just went out the window as soon as I put my goggles on. So, um, yeah, yeah, a bit sad, but that's fine. I, I wasn't racing to, to get back to Europe. I'd sort of, I'd had the shits with it all and, mm-hmm. and seen it progressing and then <clears throat> everyone going fast and I was sitting there doing nothing. So, and then I was also really in really good, um, Philip Orr, one of my sponsors, it was my accountant. Mm. He was seeing how the finances were, how everyone were going and cause he, he was Scotty's accountant and he'd been in with Eastbourne for a while and stuff. Yeah. And he, he just said, look, mate, there's no, don't rush back. It's, it's struggling. So, um, Poland, like I, I would love to crack Poland, but I hadn't technically mm. cracked Poland anyway. I, I'd done, I was a heat leader in this, in the first division, but not the extra league. So, um, yeah, I just called it quits. Yeah, and then settled which for life, life back at home, you know, then basically. Yeah, and yeah which is really hard. Yeah, <laughs> even harder than 10 left, you know. <laughs> way, way harder. <laughs> yeah, yeah. Jumping, when you're kind of, when you're kind of like a pen pusher, you know, sitting at a desk is, is not like sitting there on a spiel bike, is it? So. <laughs> no, no, I, it's exactly what I do. I sit at a desk on my computer for eight, nine, ten hours a day. Yeah. So it's... um. Yeah, it's way different, and um, yeah, the body doesn't look <laughs> after itself when it sits on its ass. So, um, and apparently, when you join a, a gym, it doesn't get you fit. You have to actually go. So. <laughs> Otherwise, it, they nickel your money. You know. That's yeah. <laughs> yeah. 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 So. Yeah. But um, honestly, Cam, it's been great to have you on the show tonight or this morning, as it is here. No you know. Um, but uh, I must wrap it up tonight because obviously we be soon for your bedtime probably and then going to work tomorrow. <laughs> it is. It is. And then back to the grind. <laughs> yeah, back to the new grind and everything. But um, thanks for everyone who's been watching tonight. Um, please go like the YouTube channel. Uh, subscribe to the podcast. It's on Apple, Spotify, and everything else it's on. Um, also like the Facebook pages. Uh, there is a private group and there's also uh, an open group. But um, if you join it, you'll get all the information for every show we've done so far and more to come. So, but um, thanks for your, thanks for your time tonight, Cam. You know, it's, no worries, uh, no. Thank you for yours. That's not no problem. I don't mind getting up early. It don't bother me. <laughs> <laughs> but um, cheers to that, Cam. Much appreciated. No worries. Uh, everyone, stay safe, and uh, hope hope you guys turn the corner soon. Because um, yeah, I, I know what you're going through. It's it's not much good at all. No. Cheers, buddy. Thanks for that. Cheers. See ya.